Brahman, while he does not agree to these things, yet he recalls laughs and talks and games that he formerly had with women. 149 Furthermore, Brahman, while he does not agree to these things, yet he sees a householder or a householder's son possessed of, endowed with, and indulging in, the five courts of sense desire. 150 Furthermore, Brahman, while he does not agree to these things, yet he leads the life of purity aspiring to some order of deities, thinking through this rite, virtue, or this ritual, vow, or this asceticism I shall become a great deity or some lesser deity. He enjoys it, desires it, and takes satisfaction in it. This, Brahman, is what is torn, rent, blotched and modeled in one who leads the life of purity. This man, will not be released from suffering, I say, A45456. This is how tornness, etc., should be understood as included under the breach that has gain, etc., as its cause and under the seven bonds of sexuality. 151 Untornness, however, is accomplished by the complete non-breaking of the training precepts, by making amends for those broken for which amends should be made, by the absence of the seven bonds of sexuality, and, as well, by the non-arising of such evil things as anger, enmity, contempt, domineering, envy, avarice, deceit, fraud, obduracy, presumption, pride, conceit, haughtiness, conceit, vanity, and negligence, MN7, and by the arising of such qualities as fewness of wishes, contentment, and effacement, MN24. 152 Virtues not broken for the purpose of gain, etc., and rectified by making amends after being broken by the faults of negligence, etc., and not damaged by the bonds of sexuality and by such evil things as anger and enmity, are called entirely untorn, unrent, unblotched, and unmodeled. And those same virtues are liberating since they bring about the state of a freeman, and praised by the wise since it is by the wise that they are praised, and unadhered to since they are not adhered to by means of craving and views, and conducive to concentration since they conduce to access. Concentration or to absorption concentration. That is why their untornness, etc., should be understood as cleansing, see also 7.f. 153 This cleansing comes about in two ways, through seeing the danger of failure in virtue, and through seeing the benefit of perfected virtue. Herein, the danger of failure in virtue can be seen in accordance with such suttas as that beginning, Pikhas, there are these five dangers for the unvirtuous in the failure of virtue, A3252. 154 Furthermore, on account of his unvirtuousness an unvirtuous person is displeasing to deities and human beings, is uninstructable by his fellows in the life of purity, suffers when unvirtuousness is censured, and is remorseful when the virtuous are praised. Owing to that unvirtuousness he is as ugly as hemp cloth. Contact with him is painful because those who fall in with his views are brought to long-lasting suffering in the states of loss. He is worthless because he causes no great fruit to accrue to those who give him gifts. He is as hard to purify as a cesspit many years old. He is like a log from a pyre, see at 99, for he is outside both recluseship and the lay state. Though claiming the Pikho state he is no Pikho, so he is like a donkey following a herd of cattle. He is always nervous, like a man who is everyone's enemy. He is as unfit to live with as a dead carcass. Though he may have the qualities of learning, etc., he is as unfit for the homage of his fellows in the life of purity as a charnel ground fire is for that of Brahmins. He is as incapable of reaching the distinction of attainment as a blind man is of seeing a visible object. He is as careless of the good law as a gut or snipe is of a kingdom. Though he fancies he is happy, yet he suffers because he reaps suffering as told in the discourse on the mass of fire, A4 128-34. 155 Now, the Blessed One has shown that when the unvirtuous have their minds captured by pleasure and satisfaction in the indulgence of the five courts of sense desires, in receiving salutation, in being honored, etc., the result of that kama, directly visible in all ways, is very violent pain, with that kama as its condition. 
capable of producing a gush of hot blood by causing agony of heart with the mere recollection of it. Here is the text. Pichas, do you see that great mass of fire burning, blazing and glowing, yes, venerable sir, what do you think, Pichas, which is better, that one gone forth should sit down or lie down embracing that mass of fire burning, blazing and glowing? or that he should sit down or lie down embracing a warrior noble maiden or a brahmin maiden or a maiden of householder family, with soft, delicate hands and feet, it would be better. Venerable Sir, that he should sit down or lie down embracing a warrior noble maiden. It would be painful, Venerable Sir. If he sat down or lay down embracing that. Great mass of fire burning, blazing and glowing. 156 I say to you, Pichas. I declare to you, Pichas, that it would be better for one gone forth who is unvirtuous, who is evil-natured, of unclean and suspect habits, secretive of his acts, who is not an ascetic and claims to be one, who does not lead the life of purity and claims to do so, who is rotten within, lecherous, and full of corruption, to sit down or lie down embracing that great mass of fire burning, blazing and glowing. Why is that? By his doing so, Pichas, he might come to death or deadly suffering, yet he would not on that account, on the breakup of the body, after death, reappear in states of loss, in an unhappy destiny, in perdition, in hell. But if one who is unvirtuous, evil-natured, and full of corruption, should sit down or lie down embracing a warrior noble maiden, that would be long for his harm and suffering, on the breakup of the body, after death he would reappear in states of loss, in an unhappy destiny, in perdition, in hell, A4 128 29. 157 Having thus shown by means of the analogy of the mass of fire the suffering that is bound up with women and has as its condition the indulgence of the five cords of sense desires by the unvirtuous, to the same intent he showed, by the following similes of the horsehair rope, the sharp spear, the iron sheet, the iron ball, the iron bed, the iron chair, and the iron cauldron, the pain. That has as its condition acceptance of homage and reverential salutation, and the use of robes, alms food, bed and chair, and dwelling by unvirtuous Pichas. What do you think, Pichas, which is better, that one should have a strong horsehair rope twisted round both legs by a strong man and tightened so that it cut through the outer skin, and having cut through the outer skin it cut through the inner skin, and having cut through the inner skin it cut through the flesh, and having cut through the flesh it cut through the sinews, and having cut through the sinews it cut through the bones, and having cut through the bones it remained crushing the bone marrow, or that he should consent to the homage of great warrior nobles, great Brahmins, great householders. A4 129. And, what do you think, Pichas, which is better? that one should have a strong man wound one's breast with a sharp spear tempered in oil, or that he should consent to the reverential salutation of great warrior nobles, great Brahmins, great householders. A4 130 And, what do you think, Pichas, which is better, that one's body should be wrapped by a strong man in a red-hot iron sheet burning, blazing and glowing, or that he should use robes given out of faith by great warrior nobles? Great Brahmins, Great Householders. A4 130-31 And, what do you think, Pichas, which is better, that one's mouth should be prized open by a strong man with red-hot iron tongs burning, blazing and glowing, and that into his mouth should be put a red-hot iron ball burning, blazing and glowing, which burns his lips and burns his mouth and tongue and throat and belly and passes out below carrying with it his bowels and entrails, or that he should use alms food given out of faith by great warrior nobles. A4 131 32. And, what do you think, Pichas, which is better, that one should have a strong man seize him by the head or seize him by the shoulders and seat him or lay him on a red-hot iron bed or iron chair, burning, blazing and glowing, or that he should use a bed or chair given out of faith by great warrior nobles. A4 132-33 And, what do you think, Pichas, which is better, 
that one should have a strong man take him feet up and head down and plunge him into a red-hot metal cauldron burning, blazing and glowing, to be boiled there in a swirl of froth, and as he boils in the swirl of froth to be swept now up, now down, and now across, or that he should use a dwelling given out of faith by great warrior nobles. A4 133 34 158 What pleasure has a man of broken virtue forsaking not sense pleasures, which bear fruit of pain more violent even than the pain? In the embracing of a mass of fire? What pleasure has he in accepting homage? Who, having failed in virtue, must partake of pain? That will excel in agony. The crushing of his legs with horsehair ropes? What pleasure has a man devoid of virtue accepting salutations of the faithful, which is the cause of pain acuter still? Then pain produced by stabbing with a spear? What is the pleasure in the use of garments for one without restraint, whereby in hell he will for long be forced to undergo the contact of the blazing iron sheet? Although to him his alms food may seem tasty. Who has no virtue, it is direst poison because of which he surely will be made for long to swallow burning iron balls. And when the virtualists make use of couches and chairs, though reckoned pleasing, it is pain because they will be tortured long indeed. On red-hot blazing iron beds and chairs. Then what delight is there for one unvirtuous inhabiting a dwelling given in faith? Since for that reason he will have to dwell shut up inside a blazing iron pan? The teacher of the world, in him condemning described him in these terms, of suspect habits, full of corruption, lecherous as well. By nature evil, rotten too within. So out upon the life of him abiding. Without restraint, of him that wears the guise. Of the ascetic that he will not be. And damages and undermines himself. What is the life he leads, since any person, no. Matter who, with virtue to his credit avoids it here as those that would look well keep far away from dung or from a corpse. He is not free from any sort of terror. Though free enough from pleasure of attainment, while heaven's door is bolted fast against him, he is well set upon the road to hell. Who else if not one destitute of virtue more fit to be the object of compassion? Many indeed and grave are the defects that brand a man neglectful of his virtue. Seeing danger in the failure of virtue should be understood as reviewing in such ways as these. And seeing benefits in perfected virtues day should be understood in the opposite sense. 159 Furthermore. His virtue is immaculate. His wearing of the bowl and robes gives pleasure and inspires trust, his going forth will bear its fruit. A Pico in his virtue pure has never fear that self-reproach will enter in his heart, indeed there is no darkness in the sun. A Pico in his virtue bright shines forth in the ascetic's wood for one as by the brightness of his beams the moon lights up the firmament. Now, if the bodily perfume of virtuous Picus can succeed in pleasing even deities, what of the perfume of his virtue? It is more perfect far than all the other perfumes in the world. Because the perfume virtue gives is born unchecked in all directions. The deeds done for a virtuous man, though they be few, will bear much fruit. And so the virtuous man becomes a vessel of honor and renown. There are no cankers here and now to plague the virtuous man at all, the virtuous man digs out the root of suffering in lives to come. Perfection among humankind and even among deities, if wished for, is not hard to gain for him whose virtue is perfected. But once his virtue is perfected, his mind then seeks no other kind than the perfection of Nibbana. The state where utter peace prevails. Such is the blessed fruit of virtue, showing full. Many a varied form, so let a wise man know it well. This root of all perfections branches. 160 The mind of one who understands thus. Shudders at failure in virtue and reaches out towards the perfecting of virtue. So virtue should be cleansed with all care seeing this danger of failure in virtue and this benefit of the perfection of virtue in the way stated. 161 And at this point in the path of purification, which is shown under the headings of virtue, concentration and understanding by the stanza, when a wise man, established well in virtue, one, virtue, firstly, has been fully illustrated. 
The first chapter called the description of virtue in the path of purification composed for the purpose of gladdening good people. Chapter 1, Notes 1. From a visible datum sometimes as far down as a mental datum, or vice versa, following the order of the six kinds of objects of consciousness as given in the teaching, visum might. 5. C. 15. 2. The Great Monastery, Mahavihara, at Anuradhapura in Sri Lanka. 3. The words insight alone are meant to exclude not virtue, etc., but serenity, i.e. yahana, which is the opposite number in the pair, serenity and insight. This is for emphasis. But the word alone actually excludes only that concentration with distinction of yahana, for concentration is classed as both access and absorption, c4. Taking this stanza as the teaching for one whose vehicle is insight does not imply that there is no concentration, for no insight comes about without momentary concentration. And again, insight should be understood as the three contemplations of impermanence, pain, and not self, not contemplation of impermanence alone, visum mh910. 4. Develops applies to both consciousness and understanding. But are they mundane or supramundane? They are supramundane, because the sublime goal is described, for one developing them is said to disentangle the tangle of craving by cutting it off at the path moment, and that is not mundane. But the mundane are included here too because they immediately precede, since supramundane, CCH3 and 5, concentration and insight are impossible without mundane concentration and insight to precede them, for without the access and absorption.